guys, Alexander here, and in this video we will be deriving the mean and variance of the beta distribution. As always, I'd like to start with talking about the underlying probability density function. So the probability density function f of x for a beta distributed random variable is as follows. It's gamma of alpha plus beta divided by gamma of alpha times gamma of beta, and then we also have x to the power of alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x to the power of beta minus 1. And we also need to note that x has to be less than 1 and greater than 0. So if the probability density function is written in this way, then we will say that x follows the beta distribution with alpha and beta being the particular parameters that we're working with. Now, something that I would like to bring your attention to is if we examine the exponents over here of x, we have alpha minus 1. So let's examine in this probability density function, where else do we have alpha appearing? We've got an alpha over here and an alpha over here. And this is, if we have this realization that if we add any um, um, we multiply by any product with x to the power of any exponent, then we're going to be changing the alpha over here in this exponent. And that means that we're going to have to change the gamma function's value over here, as well as the gamma function's value in the numerator here. So that means that if this is a new beta distribution, let's say y follows the beta distribution with alpha plus 1 and beta, everything else will be the same except now we are going to plug in alpha plus 1 over here, alpha plus 1, and alpha plus 1. So this is a realization you need to make to make your life very easy for deriving the beta distribution's mean and variance. So if you change the, the shape parameter alpha, then you're just going to change wherever alpha appears in the probability density function. So let's start with the expected value of x. The expected value of x is always defined as the integral, integral over the entire support, so from 0 to 1, of the probability of x multiplied by the probability density function. So it's x times gamma of alpha plus beta over the gamma of alpha times the gamma of beta multiplied by x to the power of alpha minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus x to the power of beta minus 1. And all of this dx, don't forget the dx. So we see we have an x to the power 1 here and an x to the power of alpha minus 1. What we are going to want to do is we want to go change this alpha into alpha plus 1. So we're going to go write it as alpha plus 1 and then we're going to minus 1. So what has changed now is that we have the new alpha being alpha plus 1. And that, that's why I pointed out in orange over here that alpha is linked to all these other alpha values. If you change x's exponent, then you can go change these alpha values and to transform it into a new probability density function. So we want to go transform this whole integral into some constant multiplied by the integral of the PDF of a beta with alpha plus 1 and beta being the uh, parameters for it. So that's what we are interested in doing over here. So since this alpha is present in here and here, let's bring these constants outside of the integral because we're going to want to bring in gamma of alpha plus one plus beta and gamma of alpha plus one. So let's bring these guys outside of the integral. So then we have the gamma of alpha plus beta divided by gamma of alpha and we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the only parts that are remaining for now over here is the gamma of beta dx don't forget the dx we might lose a mark so what we have to go and do now is we want gamma of alpha plus 1 plus beta because that's our new alpha so we want gamma of alpha plus 1 plus beta. We want to go multiply it in here. 
That means we need to go divide by it. And if we divide by it, let's go divide outside the integral. Gamma alpha plus beta plus one. And in the denominator, we want instead of gamma of alpha, we want gamma of alpha plus one. Uh, since we're dividing with gamma of alpha plus one, we need to go multiply with gamma of alpha plus one in the top to balance up so that it can divide out to one. So this is now the new form of our integral. So let's go do some simplification. Let me rewrite the integral neatly over here. So it's gamma of alpha plus one plus beta times the gamma divided by the gamma of alpha plus one multiplied by the gamma of beta. And over here, we've got x to the power of alpha plus one minus one and one minus x to the power of beta minus one dx. So all of this in the integral is neatly sorted out now. So let's go look at these constants outside. The gamma of alpha plus one can be written as alpha times the gamma of alpha. So these two are the same. Gamma of alpha plus one is equal to alpha times the gamma of alpha. And then we have the gamma of alpha plus beta, and we're dividing by gamma of alpha, and the gamma of alpha plus beta plus one, let's use this purple color to represent that, this is going to become alpha plus beta multiplied by the gamma of alpha plus beta. And as we can see now, we are dividing by a bunch of things and we can simplify this very, very readily. So we've got gamma of alpha plus beta in the numerator that cancels out with the gamma of alpha plus beta in the denominator, gamma of alpha over here and gamma of alpha over there. So that means that the expected value of x is equal to alpha divided by alpha plus beta multiplied by the integral from zero to one of the gamma of alpha plus one plus beta times x to the power of alpha plus one minus one multiplied by one minus x to the power of beta minus one. All of this divided by the gamma of alpha plus one times the gamma of beta dx. And what we realize now that is that Oh, we've rewritten the expected value of x as some constant multiplied by an integral over the PDF of a beta distributed random variable with shape parameter alpha plus one and rate parameter beta. So this whole integral, since it's over the entire support from zero to one, the integral just is equal to one. The integral over the entire support from zero to one of the PDF of a beta distributed random variable is always going to be equal to one. So we're left with the expected value of X is equal to alpha over alpha plus beta. And that's the, how we derive the mean of the beta distribution. You might, however, note that we saw that the expected value of X is the expected value of X to the power of one and let's go back to this constant over here. Let me bring it down for us. We see that we have gamma of alpha plus beta times the gamma of alpha plus one over the gamma of alpha times the gamma of alpha plus beta plus one. And what we see over here is that Whatever the exponent is, or the order of the moment of our distribution that we're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out the first moment, which is the expected value of x, that that's, you can just go plug in into the, this gamma of alpha plus n uh, over the gamma of alpha plus beta plus n. So you can sort of think of a general formula for the nth order moment being the gamma of alpha plus beta multiplied by the gamma of alpha plus n divided by the gamma of alpha multiplied by the gamma of alpha plus beta plus n. And 
This is obvious that it works for the expected value of x to the power of 1. We managed to solve that. So let's go see indeed the case for the expected value of x squared, the second moment of the beta distributed random variable. So that's going to be the gamma of alpha plus beta multiplied by the gamma of alpha plus 2 divided by gamma of alpha times the gamma of alpha plus beta plus 2. And that is equal to the gamma of alpha plus beta. The gamma of alpha plus 2 is equal to alpha plus 1 multiplied by the gamma of alpha plus 1. And we're dividing by gamma of alpha multiplied by the alpha plus 1 plus beta plus 1 multiplied by the gamma of alpha plus beta plus 1. And we can then go further and say, well, doesn't this, is there not some familiar terms that we have already solved before? And indeed there is. If we look over here, there's a gamma of alpha plus beta, a gamma of alpha plus 1, gamma of alpha and a gamma of alpha plus beta plus 1. So we have these terms already appearing. So let's just factor out the new terms, alpha plus 1 over alpha plus beta plus 1. Let's bring that to the side. And we see over here we've got the gamma of alpha plus beta multiplied by the gamma of alpha plus 1 divided by the gamma of alpha times the gamma of alpha plus beta plus 1. So this is equal to alpha plus 1 divided by alpha plus beta plus 1 multiplied by, this is simply the expected value of x, which we already found over here. And we found its value to be alpha over alpha plus beta. So this is what we have. So let's simplify that one step further. That's alpha plus 1 times alpha over alpha plus beta multiplied by alpha plus beta plus 1. And that's how you can quickly derive a moment for beta distribution by using this formula over here and a bit of simplification and then we can always find the previous term present in there. So if you're working your way up in the moment, you see that we have some new constant multiplied by the previous moment. And that is a recurrence that relation that we can produce. But if you use this formula, you can easily find the value for the nth order moment of the beta distribution. We've derived the expected value of x squared now using this formula that we, that we observed. Let's go see if we can find out the variance then and if that is indeed the case. So the variance of x is always equal to the expected value of x squared minus the square of the expected value of x. So that's equal to alpha plus 1 times alpha divided by alpha plus beta multiplied by alpha plus beta plus 1 minus alpha over alpha plus beta squared. Simplifying this, we get alpha plus 1 multiplied by alpha over alpha plus beta times alpha plus beta plus 1 minus alpha squared over alpha plus beta squared. And if we note We've got an alpha plus beta to the power of 2 over here and only 1 to the power of 1 here and an alpha plus beta plus 1 here. So let's go multiply to get the denominators to be the same. And over here, we just need one more alpha plus beta term. Bring that in. So then we're left with alpha squared plus alpha times alpha plus beta minus alpha squared times alpha plus beta plus 1. All of this divided by alpha plus beta squared multiplied by alpha plus beta plus 1. And as we go on further, we see that this is, and the numerator can simplify to alpha cubed plus alpha squared beta plus alpha squared plus alpha times beta, negative alpha cubed, negative alpha squared beta, negative alpha squared divided by alpha plus beta squared multiplied by alpha plus beta plus 1. So let's go simplify. We're almost done with finding the variance. So alpha cubed minus alpha cubed, alpha squared beta minus alpha squared beta, alpha squared minus alpha squared. And we're left with the variance of x 
for the beta distribution is equal to alpha times beta divided by alpha plus beta squared multiplied by alpha plus beta plus one. And that's how we find the variance of the beta distribution by deriving it by hand.